K-pop or Korean pop is taking over the world. The stars of the genre inspire fandom that crosses country lines, but it isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Have you ever wondered what life is really like for K-pop stars? Well, let us tell you. It's probably a lot darker than you thought. Stay tuned to find out why your favorite stars have to date in private. New around here? Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos like this. Now onto the dark side of being a K-pop star. So if you're tuning into this video, then you probably know what K-pop is. If you stumble here accidentally, then we'll start by telling you a little about the genre. Remember the fandom that Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake inspired at the height of their careers? Multiply that and then you have an idea of how big of a fad K-pop is. K-pop stands for Korean pop. To really understand the genre, let's take it back to the beginning. South Korean culture as a whole has been spreading across Asia since the 1990s. Korean TV dramas, along with Korean pop music, become staples in markets formerly dominated by Japan and Hong Kong. While K-pop has recently started to make its way into Western market, the pool of people in the West who subscribe to K-pop is quite small compared to those in Asia. But even still, the second album from Korea's biggest boy band, EXO, outsold One Direction's four and became one of 2015's biggest selling albums. With so much hype surrounding the genre, it would make sense that these stars would be living amazing lives that make everyone jealous. They are pop stars for goodness sakes, but unfortunately, when it comes to K-pop, many of the performers' lives are a lot darker than you'd imagine. When most pop stars make it big, they buy themselves a luxury place to live. When you are making the big bucks, it seems only natural that you would live in a mansion. Not for K-pop stars. Most of them actually live in extremely small dorms. Being a star for these kids is all-consuming. There is no going going to work and then coming home to relax. They live in housing that is close to their agencies to ensure that they are pretty much never off the clock. Most K-pop idols have a leasing contract of two years, so they at least have to stay in the dorms for that long. For new groups, their rooms are anything but luxurious. On average, a five-member group will live in a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house. But there have been pictures that have surfaced of rooms full of bunk beds, which would suggest that most members who live in that house were sharing a room. Pictures of popular group B1A4 all have in front of a tiny television also recently came out. The photos made fans wonder what the living situation of their favorite idols was really like. Can you imagine working with the same people day in, day out, and then going home and having to share a room with them? You would basically have no time to yourself. That would drive anyone crazy. Bands who make enough money usually move out of the dorms as soon as they can. We can see why. Another reason that K-pop stars tend to stay in dorms is because it makes it easier for them to all stay on their diets. In this genre, skinny is always better so some idols are on insanely strict diets. To stay thin, the ladies of pop group Nine Muses said that they only eat what they can fit in tiny cups. Artist Park Baum received a lot of attention for losing weight and she said that the secret behind it was her cabbage diet, which means that she really only ate mostly cabbage. The water in the cabbage helped her body feel full even when it wasn't. Other girls groups have been known to stick to a diet that consists of only sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are great, but who wants to eat them all the time? Absolutely no one. Another popular diet amongst these youngsters is the Denmark diet. Kara's ex-member Nicole used to stick to it. How it works is that you eat a particular regimen of lettuce, beef, coffee, eggs, and spinach, which reduces your daily calorie intake to only 600. To maintain your weight, the National Honor Society in the UK recommends that women take in 2,000 calories a day. If you've ever seen Nicole, then you know that she is already small. Such an extreme diet seems like overkill. Other stars would rather not restrict which foods they eat. For instance, Ga In from Brown Eyed Girls and Soyu from Sistars said that they stick to eating one meal a day. Can you imagine? Only eating once and then having to go through the rest of the day with nothing? Especially when you spend as much time rehearsing dance moves as those girls do. Other stars have admitted to only eating raw food or keeping their calorie consumption to under a thousand per day, but nothing tops these next two diets. One cat from GI said that at one point she was only drinking one bottle of soy milk per day. Are you kidding us? One a day. How can you even survive? But even that sounds better than how K-pop group TVXQ allegedly only drank water for the whole week before their debut. When dieting isn't enough, stars are often forced into getting plastic surgery. Plastic surgery is extremely popular among these idols and management firms because of the pressure to look absolutely perfect. One popular procedure called the V-line operation is quite dangerous. I performed corrective jaw surgery. Dr. David A. Koslovsky, a surgeon 
surgeon at Columbia College of Dental Medicine says, This is first and foremost a functional procedure for when teeth are misaligned. It does have an aesthetic benefit, but that's not why we do it. It's a complex, risky procedure. You could have permanent numbness and there have been cases where people have died from this operation. It is also an extremely painful procedure where the jaws are wired shut for six weeks. It could take months for the swelling to disappear, but many women do it because of how drastic the results are. Since the rise of K-pop, it was reported in 2013 that one in five South Korean women had had some kind of plastic surgery. K-pop has completely transformed the beauty standard in South Korea and the stars are persuaded to try to strive for more Caucasian features. K-pop agencies have gotten so bold that they have encouraged groups to even make before and after photos of their transformations. Six Bomb recorded a video called Becoming Prettier Before when they each got consultations from a surgeon. The follow-up video was posted a month later. We all wanted to get some surgeries done to look prettier and thought, why not perform a song about it instead of trying to conceal it? Dane, the lead singer, told AFP, people will notice it anyway, so we wanted to be open about this reality where many women want to look pretty. It is so common among the idols that some of them even become spokespeople for surgical companies. Singer GNA was in one promo for the Cinderella Clinic. In the video, she said how nice the doctors were and instructed people to come in to get more beautiful. As a K-pop star, not only are you pretty much instructed to get plastic surgery yourself, but by doing it, you promote the trend to young girls. I like girls' generation. Korean schoolgirl Kim Ryo-gyeong told The Atlantic, They have double eyelid and a small face, a round forehead from an implant. They say they didn't do any surgery, but I know they did. So in a way, these stars are forced to pressure young girls into getting procedures done as well. The idea here is that you like the appearance of the idols, and you should try and look like them," said James Turnbull, a writer and lecturer in Korea. K-pop is a package that's not confined to the music, and it's not only the female K-pop artists who are led to go in this direction. The males feel the pressure too. Many of them get double eyelid surgery, nose jobs, and even insane bone reduction surgery. There are no ends that K-pop stars won't go to to look perfect and sell more albums. Their agency's coercion doesn't just stop at suggesting plastic surgery. Artist Jay Park recently went on American podcast, The Glow Up, and said that he witnessed abuse of other K-pop hopefuls firsthand. The culture in itself was kinda like when you get certain lyrics wrong or you get a certain dance move wrong, they would literally hit you, he said. That's kinda like the Korean way, you know? It's not like that now, it's much better now. They wouldn't do that to me because I was very good at dancing, but I would see this dude next to me and he was getting some stuff wrong and getting whooped. He went on to say, that the stress of it all caused him to cry during those days. I was thinking very naively and thinking I would make some money and come back, he said. Then I went over there and trained for about three and a half years and we got vocal and dance training. It was kind of like a boot camp. It helped in a lot of ways, but it also killed my passion and creativity in a lot of ways as well. It's kind of like programming almost. Sing it like this, do it like this, so like you lose your individuality. Since this podcast came out, the Korean government has stepped in to make things better. The eight major K-pop agencies have now been ordered by the government to change clauses in their contracts that were seen as unfair to the trainees and pretty much illegal. Jay Park wasn't the only one to experience rough treatment. Prince Mark of JJCC left the band and up until recently, no one knew why. He eventually came out and described everything that he went through. Because the band was created by Jackie Chan, when they first came out, they were extremely popular. They had 17 or 18 hour workdays pretty much every day. He said that he broke his foot once and was still required to perform and make all of the appearances. He also had an ear infection but was not able to see the doctor regularly due to their intense schedule. And during the whole four years that he was working in K-pop, he only saw his mother once. Can you imagine being under that kind of stress and not even getting to lean on your family? Judging by the stories from these two, it seems pretty clear that in K-pop, K-pop, your agency owns your life. Even when it comes to things as simple as dating, most stars choose to do it in secret. Why? Because their management strongly suggests that they don't date. And when they say strongly suggests, we mean forbids it in some cases. Rob Schwartz, the Asia Bureau chief of Billboard magazine, had a lot to say about the subject. It's possibly comparable to the situation in the 1940s in the US, when film studios had huge control over their movie stars. Even then, they may have been encouraged not 
not to date or marry, but there was less coercion, he told the BBC. In 2013, Minami Mangishi from AKB48 was forced to shave her head as a public apology. Why? Because she had broken the rules of her management company and spent the night with her boyfriend. This act was supposed to be a form of public apology. Talk about harsh. So you can see that underneath all the glitz, glitter, and screaming fans, there is a truly ugly dark side to being a K-pop star.